Thank you so much. This is like my favorite panel I've ever been on in my life. All these black bosses in one place. I'm overwhelmed. Okay, so I'm really excited to be here. Thank you, Sherry, for inviting me. I have done a lot of work on defining what the decolonization of international development will look like. So I'd like to contribute that as a framework for challenging anti-black racism at the institutional level. And so when I think about international development as a product of colonization, as a product of white supremacy culture, I think the first thing is how do colonial paradigms show up in international development? And I think first the all white leadership that both of the my co-panelists have talked about who are not only doing the fundraising on behalf of black and brown people, but also defining what aid means, defining when it starts, when it ends, what are the metrics for success, who should get it and who doesn't. Uh, that The fact that all of that is being controlled by white leadership is a, a sign that international development might be colonized still. I think the inequitable pay scales for those not living in Europe or North America is another manifestation of white supremacy culture and international development. I also think poverty porn, which is instrumentalizing the trauma of black and brown people for the benefit of fundraising in Europe and North America is also a manifestation of white supremacy culture. And so for me, to decolonize international development, to dismantle white supremacy culture. I think first, there, there are four things that I wanna talk about. First, I think it means to understand colonial histories and trauma, because I think oftentimes the space that is held by white led development institution perpetuates that history. And so I do believe it's inappropriate to enter a country or a space, no matter how little time you have to prepare, um, with no understanding about how whiteness, white bodies, your institutions, money, your institutions, all white leadership can be disruptive and triggering based on that nation's history and can be disruptive and triggering based on the amazing, you know, in my opinion, black women, especially on the continent and like the women on this call who are doing the work for their communities and live outside of timelines, project timelines, because they live there and they are of there. Um, and I think that understanding the histories and trauma of the country is important to international development and important to decolonizing the sector. I think dismantling racist development norms like, you, like I said, using generic and harmful poverty porn to raise money for institutions when that money isn't going to the people that you're, you're showing uh, on your social media or in your marketing materials. Um, I also think, like I said, paying people significantly less because they don't live in North America or Europe. There's a lot of reasons why people think that this is appropriate. And I think it's actually quite demoralizing and problematic, especially for the people who get always get the shortest end of the stick, which is oftentimes black women. And then I think to decolonize international development is to local to, to honor locally rooted expertise, not because we want to use their experience um, for a campaign or we want to utilize their language skills because they speak French or Portuguese or all the languages that people like Valerie speak. Um, but because we really, really read their work, we're inspired by their art, we cite their research, we see them as experts and not a means to an end. And so I just feel like for me, to decolonize international development is an act of love. And this concept I borrowed from Dr. Rosalias Mesa, and she is a Mexicana psychologist who believes that if you are working within a white patriarchal system rooted in the colonization of black and brown people, it is a radical act of love to make space for the deconstruction of those paradigms. 